I've been using the FX6 for the past few months and I absolutely love this camera. The versatility of removing all of the handles and just using the body with a lens is fantastic, but also if you need to run all day, you can have a V-mount battery and a top plate with a monitor and you can just rig this camera out to just about any way you want. There are lots of different options when it comes to rigging out the Sony FX6, but in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Small Rig Pro Kit. This is the 3225, I believe, but that kit comes with a dovetail, rods, a base plate, a Manfrotto quick release plate, and a locking monitor mount for the monitor that comes with the FX6, as well as two base plates. So we're gonna go over that and then I'll actually uh, just continue going over the rest of my rig. Starting off with screen placement, I find myself putting the Sony FX6 screen on the back left-hand side of the handle. I like to have my menu screen right below my larger screen so uh, I can have a clean feed of whatever I'm going to be filming, but also if I have to hunt through the menus, I can still do that on the smaller screen right under it. Next up, we have the top plates for the FX6. This has a 3 8s, lots of quarter 20s, and another mount point for your monitor. I like using these because I have a quarter 20 monitor mount and I would much rather screw my monitor into a top plate that's then screwed into the body of my FX6 than risk damaging any of the ports on my FX6 or the handle. So let's put these top plates on. With the top plate on, we can now route our monitor cable around the front of our handle and we still have access to the cable management clip that comes originally on the FX6. There's also a spot for that on the top handle here and your um, sensor distance marker if you like to use that pin. Uh, we can plug our monitor in and route our cables through our normal cable management channels. With that cable in there, uh, one thing to note here, I also like to put my monitor so I can flip it closed and then flip it like so it's flat. So whenever I go to put it in my bag, it just slips down easy and I don't have to constantly take this monitor on and off. Uh, so now that this top part of the camera is kind of assembled, let's start to work our way down. Let's start with the base and the rods. Taking our Manfrotto plate off of the base, we can now put this onto the bottom of our camera. This is nice because there's a 3 8 and a quarter 20, so there's two points of contact so our camera won't go left or right when it's on our rails. It'll stay completely straight. Next, we're going to put our V-mount plate on our camera. I elected to use the pretty basic small rig V-mount battery plate. It does not have any powering options on the plate itself because the small rig battery has tons of connectivity options that we don't need to use a bigger plate if we have all the connectivity on the battery. With our V-mount plate on the back of the rods, we can now take our dovetail plate and slide it into the back of the base. And we can tighten this off. I do it just about in the middle. This is nicer whenever our camera's on the tripod, we can loosen this up and then move the camera around on the tripod um, so we don't have to loosen up the rails and then move everything around little by little. But also, if we want to remove our camera quickly from the rods, we can unlock it and press the quick release button and slide our camera off. And now we can use handheld and then slide into a Manfrotto base, for example. And then we wanna put our camera back on. It's very easy to put it back on and then lock it back off. This is one of the things that drew me to the small rig system at first. I liked having the giant dovetail plate, but also having the flexibility to quickly take my camera off of the rods. Now we can power things up by putting our V-mount battery into the battery plate. And when it comes to adding a monitor, I'm using the Ninja 5 in a cage, and my cage has a NATO rail on the bottom of it. So I'm using a NATO rail to quarter 20, and I put the quarter 20 into the top plate. With our monitor on the camera, we can now start connecting things. And when it comes to powering the Ninja 5 first, I have been using this patch cable that's just two DC barrel cables and using the original uh, battery plate that comes with the Ninja 5. And this is enough to plug into the barrel DC port on the small rig battery. So I don't have to have a barrel connection port on my V-mount battery plate. Next, when it comes to powering our camera, we'll be using this cable that also plugs into the D-tap of our V-mount battery and then plugs into the back of our camera.
with the DTAP plugged in, we can now turn our camera on. This is nice because we have external V-mount battery power, but we're still having a fully charged BP battery in the camera itself. This is nice because if the V-mount battery dies, our screen may die, but we still have an internal battery that will keep recording and we can swap out a new V-mount battery. To get a feed from our camera to our monitor, I'm using the coiled Condor blue cable and I stretch this cable out before I actually use it because if you don't, it's a little tight. So with a feed from our camera to our monitor, we can now put our microphone on. And if you're going to be using wireless audio, I would definitely use the splitter cable. I have a whole video going over that that I just posted that I will leave in the description at the end of this video. I will be using um, on-camera audio for this shoot. So I have the mic that comes with the K3M module, and this doesn't need any kind of adapters to go into the mic slot on the FX6. If you're using something like a Sennheiser mic or a Deity mic, you'll have to buy an adapter, um, little rubber piece that actually makes the microphone larger so it doesn't move around when you're using it. I tried to use my Sennheiser mic right when I got my camera. Uh, not only was it way too long, but uh, it didn't fit in this mic holder. So I went and actually just used the microphone from my K3M module and uh, that worked out just fine. So this is how I set up the Sony FX6 with the Small Rig Pro Kit. I've been liking this setup because I can use a smaller V-mount battery plate and just connect everything to the V-mount battery itself. There are still uh, USB-C power delivery. Um, this is all the powering I need, but if you need more power, it's there if you need it. If you really wanted to go crazy and add a matte box to the front of this, you have rail space to do so. Um, I have what, let's just throw it on for the fun of it. <laughs> The FX6 already has built-in ND filters, so you probably wouldn't need ND. However, if you have streak filters or mist filters, or if you just wanna flag off light coming from a certain direction, um, adding a matte box to the front of your camera could be helpful. I like using this matte box holder, also from Small Rig, so we'll put that on, and we'll put the matte box on. The matte box we're using here is the Small Rig Mini Matte Box Pro, and that uses sleds for the filters, so you can put these in here, and then you can slide the sled into the front of the matte box. You don't have to try to like feed the filter into the matte box itself, so I'm a big fan of this design. Let's see if I can put this on the front blind here. And the nice thing about these two is you can hear an audible click whenever you actually put the sled into the front of the map box. So now we have a filter and a flag on the top. However, the Small Rig Mini Map Box Pro also comes with a side flag. So if you have additional light that you don't want hitting your lens, you can put this in the front. See if I can do this two for two. And if we open these side flags, we can now block more light hitting our lens coming in from the side. And if you roll up to a client shoot with this thing, the client is immediately gonna know why you were so expensive. This thing looks like an absolute behemoth of a rig. This is how I've been rigging out my FX6 lately. I love the versatility of this camera. I can rig it out into something giant like this where I can film all day and not have to worry about battery life or I can strip it down to just the body and a lens and throw it on a gimbal for a very lightweight kit. What do you guys think of the build? Let me know in the comments down below. And here are some more FX6 videos you can check out. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.